this video, we'll take a look at how to configure front-end optimization. Let's begin. The front-end optimization feature requires integrated caching to be enabled as well. So we'll begin by enabling integrated caching and also enabling front-end optimization. Next, as we drill down under front-end optimization, we see that we have the engine settings over here to the right. We can click and view the different thresholds that can be set. Here we find that the quality is set to 75% as a threshold for triggering optimization, as well as the size of the CSS file, JavaScript, and images. Click the OK button to dismiss that. As with many features on the ADC appliance, we first configure an action and then we would bind it to a policy or assign it to a policy with a policy expression. Front-end optimization comes with five predefined actions for basic, moderate, aggressive, image optimize only, and no optimization whatsoever. To specify which optimizations we'd like to apply, we can click the Add button to create a new front-end optimization action. Here, I will create this FEO action for demo purposes and review the different areas. With regard to optimizing JavaScript, we can inline it, we can minify it or remove the extra spaces from around it, and also we can move it to the end of the body tag. Image optimizations including, include shrinking it to the attributes of the image tag in HTML. We can inline the images. We can choose to optimize them, convert to JXR format, even convert GIFs to PNGs, perform a lazy load, or even convert the format to WebP. Style sheets can also be optimized here, again by inlining them, moving them to the head tag, combining them, converting the imports to links, as well as minifying them. It should be noted that as we choose which optimizations to apply, it will always warrant testing against the application to which we bind these front-end optimization actions. Removing the comments from HTML allows us to reduce the overall size of the file that we will be sending. And finally, down toward the bottom here, in addition to extending the page cache and other measurements, the domain sharding feature allows us to replace URLs or other links in the HTML file and spread them across multiple domains. This will then circumvent the default browser behavior of downloading only two items per URL and make it appear as if this one page is requesting resources from multiple servers. As we choose the different ones we'd like to apply, so we'll shrink the attributes, we'll choose the convert option here, minify CSS and combine them into a single, remove HTML comments, for example, and I'll click the Create button. And this creates my new front-end optimization actions. Next, I'll go to my Policies node and create a policy to apply front-end optimization. Here, of course, it's just a matter of front-end optimization policy for demo purposes and then choosing which action to apply. I then need to define an expression to be true, and I'll go ahead and supply true. Before I bind it to an application, let's call up an application and see what, what shows up here. So we'll go to HTTPS, rather HTTP slash um, RPG, rpg.training.lab slash home.php. And if we were to look at the page source, we could read through, there's the title page, the script information. Uh, we see some comments uh, in here as well. And I'm going to bind that policy to the, 
to this application. So from the front end optimization policies, I'll select the policy manager and choose that particular virtual server. I will then bind the front end optimization policy and choose done. Next, I'll go back and clear all the browsing history and reload the page. And this time when I right click and view page source, I see that I am missing the comments. In this video, we've demonstrated how to configure and apply front end optimization. Thanks for watching. Thank you.